Picture this. It's January 1978. One of the coldest winters Montana has ever seen. Temperatures are plummeting to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Families are huddling together under every blanket they own while their pipes freeze solid and their windows crack from the cold. But there's one cabin sitting right on the edge of town where a man named Dick Kimmy is walking around in a t-shirt and his neighbors think he's either a wizard or he's completely lost his mind. For the past three years, everyone in Missoula had been calling Dick Kimmy crazy, mocking him at the hardware store when he bought what they thought were useless materials because he thought Dick had wasted his entire life savings on what he called hippie nonsense, while families three houses down are being evacuated because their heating oil has run out and they re at risk of hypothermia. Dick is sitting in his living room reading a book in complete comfort. No furnace roaring, no wood stove crackling. His neighbors started noticing something was different when they saw there was no smoke coming from Dick's chimney, which seemed impossible because everyone knew you couldn't survive a Montana winter without burning wood constantly. He actually stopped and knocked on Dick's door because he was genuinely worried the man might be dead inside. But when Dick answered the door in his t-shirt with a warm smile, feeling the wave of heat coming from inside while his own face was going numb from the cold, what Dick Kimmy had built wasn't magic. Because while everyone else was trapped in the old ways of thinking about heat and survival, Dick had designed something that would eventually change how we think about sustainable living forever. The story starts three years earlier in 1975. Returned to Montana after spending years in California, where he did become fascinated with something called passive solar design, a concept so simple and yet so revolutionary that most people couldn't even understand it when he tried to explain it. Dick had sold his house in San Diego, cashed out his small pension, plans for a cabin that everyone said would never work, and that would require him to build in ways that the local contractor said violated basic common sense. And he knew that if he could just get people to see it with their own eyes, the local building inspector showed up three times in the first week because nothing about what Dick was doing made any sense according to conventional wisdom. The south-facing wall of the cabin was almost entirely glass. That windows are the weak point in any building's insulation. But Dick just smiled and kept working. They were there to capture it that would drink in every precious ray of winter sunlight and convert it into warmth that would last long into the night. Dick had installed something that seemed even crazier. A wall made of concrete blocks, painted black, stretching the entire length of the south side of his cabin. That black thermal mass would absorb the heat like a giant battery. People would drive by and see Dick out there painting concrete blocks black in the middle of summer. And they d shake their heads and whisper to each other about poor Dick Kimmy, who d clearly spent too much time in the California sun. Who D come back home with his head full of ideas that might work in sunny San Diego, but would never survive a real Montana winter. What they didn't know was that Dick had calculated everything down to the inch. The angle of the sun during winter solstice. The R value of insulation required in the north wall to prevent heat loss. And the precise overhang needed on the roof to block the high summer sun while allowing the low winter sun to flood in. Dick had even designed the floor with tubes running through concrete, and he'd insulated the foundation so well that he couldn't escape into the frozen ground below. Every detail was intentional, and every choice was backed by physics that most people in 1975 had never even heard of. The cabin took him eight months to build. A guy named Robert Chun, who he studied engineering, and was one of the few people in town who understood what Dick was trying to do. They worked through the summer and fall of 1975, telling him he was going to freeze to death in that glass box. That he should give up this crazy experiment and build a normal cabin with a normal furnace like a normal person. But Dick had committed everything to this project. And when the first snow fell in November 1975, no backup furnace, no wood stove, nothing but the sun and his carefully calculated thermal mass. And that first winter, People waved for Dick to give up, to admit defeat, to come crawling back asking to borrow a space heater. By December 1975, word started spreading around Missoula that something strange was happening at Dick Kimmy's cabin. People who'd gone to check on him, expecting to find him shivering and miserable, 
instead found him comfortable and warm. And the few visitors he allowed inside couldn't believe that there was no conventional heating system running. The interior temperature stayed between 68 and 75 degrees, even when outside it was below zero, which had absorbed so much heat during the sunny winter days that it would radiate warmth all through the night, releasing stored solar energy slowly and steadily like a giant radiator that never needed fuel. Dick kept meticulous records, showing that even during stretches of cloudy weather, and he calculated that his heating costs were essentially zero while his neighbors were spending hundreds of dollars a month on heating oil and firewood. When the energy crisis hit and heating fuel became scarce and expensive, when the government was asking citizens to lower their thermostats to 60 degrees to conserve energy, Dick Kimmy's cabin just kept humming along at a perfect 72 degrees without using a single drop of fuel or a single kilowatt of electricity. The local newspaper finally did a story on him, and they took pictures of Dick in his t-shirt standing next to his indoor tomato plants, while outside the windows you could see snowdrifts four feet high. After that article, everything changed for Dick. Suddenly he wasn't the crazy guy anymore, he was a pioneer. And people started showing up at his door, asking how he did it, wanting to see the thermal mass wall, wanting to understand the physics. Dick spent the rest of his life teaching and advocating for passive solar design. He helped dozens of people design their own solar cabins, proving that with good design and an understanding of basic physics, you could live comfortably in one of the harshest climates in America without burning fossil fuels. Modern architects used the same principles Dick figured out in the 1970s. In cool and summer, using nothing but intelligent design and the free energy of the sun, all because one man was willing to be called crazy and to prove that sometimes the best solutions are the ones that work with nature instead of against it. Dick Kimmy passed away in 1994, a testament to the power of thinking differently and the courage it takes to build something the world says is impossible. If this story inspired you, then subscribe, because we re bringing you more forgotten heroes of history who changed the world by refusing to accept the way things have always been done. Would you live in a passive solar home?